All right. So I apologize for the funny lighting. We're in a totally different setting with a different set of recording equipment. So uh, we'll see how this goes. All a little bit of an experiment today. Uh, special shout out to Thomas and Bailey for requesting today's video. Uh, so I don't know if this will be a very long one, but we'll see how we do. Today we're going to do airplanes. I know we sort of didn't quite finish going to the moon. Uh, we'll have to do that in another episode when I have my normal computer available to me. <coughs> um, but today we'll play with uh, some airplanes. We'll talk about the basics of how to build a plane. Should be hopefully not uh, too complex or too much. So, as you know, building planes requires a cockpit. In Kerbal Space Program, this is uh, the closest we get to a normal plane cockpit. We can customize it a bit, but that will work for now. Uh, and of course, as you know, we'll need fuel tanks, which are here. So let's filter for the ones that fit. So we could use this, which is a Mark I fuel, liquid fuel fuselage. The way you pronounce that word is fuselage, not fuselage. English is not an easy language to understand. Um, but instead of this, I'm actually going to hold off and I'm going to use one of these instead, which is a divertless supersonic air intake. Because we, unlike in our rocket ships, are going to use nothing but air breathing engines. Just like normal planes, our engines in this game will need air. Uh, and the engines in this game do not, like a normal airplane engine looks like this. Let me use a, a normal airplane engine. This guy. Right? So that, you should recognize that. It kind of looks like a plane. I don't think I can attach it. Can I, can I attach that here? Yeah, there you go. It looks kind of funny. <laughs> On one side, you have an intake. A turbo fan. The other side, the exhaust. But today's plane, this is kind of big. I want something smaller. And the only smaller planes, uh, sorry, the only smaller engines in this game don't have intakes built in. So we need to have the intake someplace else. So we're not going to put that in. We'll put a little more fuel on first, just to make the plane a little longer. Nope, want to put it the right way. There we go. And how about one more? Mark one, fuel, fuel slides. There we go. All right, now I'll put the engine in the back. So this much, so far so good, right? It doesn't quite look like an airplane yet. A little bit more like a torpedo, perhaps. Um, but what's missing is wings. So we gotta add wings to the plane. Uh, so let's find aerodynamics. There's a lot of different kind of wings. We could use space plane things. We could use jumbo jet airplane wings. This is kind of a funny look, isn't it? It's, uh, there we go. Isn't that sort of futuristic looking? A little out of place, though. I haven't pointed up. There we go. Something straight out of Star Trek. Especially like clips the uh, intake like that. That's kind of cool. Nah, no, I don't think we can do those. I think we're going to use the big delta wings. A little bit too much angle there. So let's uh, just... There we go. Nice and level. <laughs> there we go. Starting to look a little bit more like an airplane. What we're missing, however, is what's called a control surface. So this wing is fixed, doesn't move. But when the plane is flying, you might want to make small adjustments to the wing, that way you can roll, or pitch, or yaw. Right? So you need what are called control surfaces to do that. Uh, and so let's add some control surfaces to, mm, is that the right one? That's too small. I think there's a bigger one. Let's find the big one. Um, control, what's it called? Uh, they're called Elevons. Maybe that was it. Yeah, let's go with that. That's good enough. Is there really no bigger one? Let's look around. Swept wing. <laughs> I did rehearse today's airplane, but clearly not well enough. The FAT 455 control circuit. Let's go with that. Um, and let's see if we deploy it. Yeah, that should work. It's an experiment. If we crash, all the more comedy, right? So now, these can move up and down. That will give our plane the ability to roll and pitch. Because if one of them moves, then that's going to cause the plane to roll. If bo they both move, that's going to cause the plane to pitch. However, the plane might want to do one of these. That's called the yaw. And so to prevent that, we need a vertical fin, normally called a tail fin. So let's find something that looks like a tail fin and stick that on the top of our plane. Uh, 
winglet. I think we actually have a thing called a tail thing. Tail. That one's a little big. That one's <laughs> really big. Deluxe Delta Wing. That'll do the job. So now, because these are somewhat vertical, if they move, they will affect the plane's stability in this direction. So that gives us yaw control. Last but not least, of course, we need landing gear. So we'll put one of those up front, something like that, make sure that's level. And how about two in the back? So, so far, so good. You know, earlier I told you planes are really hard. That didn't look too difficult, did it? Well, if we just try and fly this, I suspect it won't fly. Um, actually, it might fly because I practiced this too much. Um, let's make it such that it won't fly so I can show you what happens in that situation. There we go. That probably won't fly. So let's test. Test one. And I'll explain why it won't fly in just a moment. Move this guy back there. There we go. Let's try that. See what happens. Alright, so again we're on the runway. You should recognize it from our last video. Throttle up to full. And let's see what happens. This engine has what's called an afterburner, which basically they dump extra fuel into the exhaust. And so you see it makes a nice yellow flame. Gives you a lot of extra power. However, it also burns a lot of extra fuel. So let's try and lift up. Up, 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 up. And you see the plane just <coughs> wants to flip. I can't control it. I'm trying not to flip. Please don't flip. Uh, I got some control. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, no, 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 no. Pull up, pull up. As you see, it's very difficult to control. We sort of have some control now, but the plane still really wants to pitch up. It actually flies better than I expected it to. But it, it's not super stable. Yeah, because it does things like that. Yeah, no good. No, survive. Please survive. Uh, 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 uh. Yes. Jebediah Kerman lives to fight another day. All right. Let us try this again. So the reason why this plane wanted to flip has to do with a property called the center of mass, which is a term you might have heard before. So the center of mass of any object is where literally the center of all the weight is. So, for example, my phone here weighs, whatever it weighs, half a pound less, 400 kilo, 400 grams. It is pretty much evenly distributed weight, right? And so the center is probably, let me hold it like this, probably somewhere in the middle, right? And so if I were to hang the phone in the middle, or from up, up top, it would sort of balance. If I hang the phone, if I put a string here, if I put a string here and I try to balance around, it's going to fall over, right? But if I put a string in the middle on the center of mass, it will sort of balance, right? If my phone was really heavy on one side because, say, my watch was sitting on it, now the center of mass is closer to the watch. Right? So you sort of add up where all the mass is and we're at where the center. So now if I hung a string from here, it would probably balance. But if I hung a string from the old center of mass, it probably wouldn't balance. Right? So that is what the center of mass is useful for. And it's very important for airplanes. So that is this yellow marker here is the center of mass of the airplane. That's calculated for us by the game. The blue marker is what's called our center of lift. It's a very similar concept, but instead of how much the center of where the plane is pulling down, this is the center of where the wings are pushing up, right? And so you sort of have to be very mindful of the relationship between the center of mass, which is pulling the plane down, and the wings, which are controlling the plane up. And the general rule of thumb is you want the center of lift to be just behind the center of mass. If the center of lift is in front of the center of mass, then it's gonna to wanna to flip kind of like we saw just before. Because the, 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 if you think about it, this is our plane, and the, it's pulling up in front of the center of mass. And so the whole time, the wings are sort of pivoting the plane. Whereas if it's just behind, then it's always sort of falling just a little bit, and that's very controllable if you use your flaps, the control surfaces that we added earlier. So to fix that, you simply move the wings backwards a bunch, just like that. Not only does it make the plane look a little bit more like a plane, uh, but it also moves the center of lift just behind the center of mass. And since we're having the center of lift, center of mass conversation, it also affects where you place your landing gear. You want your landing gear to be just surrounding the center of mass. I'll bring it back just a little bit. Um, it's a delicate balance. If the landing gear is too far forwards, then the plane's going to want to tilt, which is, and the engine's just going to hit the tarmac, um, which will cause the engine to explode, which is fun, but not effective for creating planes that fly. Um, whereas if they're too far back, so if a landing gear is just the front of the plane, just in the back of the plane, the plane can't rotate when it tries to lift off. 
Um, so you need the landing gear sort of just in the right place such that it doesn't tilt too much and scrape the engines on the or the, the back of the plane, um, but it tilts enough that it can actually take off. Yep. So let's call this test number two. And let's try and launch this plane. All right. So let's do the exact same thing we did last time, throttle up to full, and off we go. And again, we'll enable the afterburners just for fun. Since we're just doing the test, we're not so worried about fuel. Let's so pick up some speed. Computer's struggling a little bit to do the video recording and the game. But I think we're going to make it... Oh, there we go. You see the engine came kind of close there. I might need to put the landing gear a little further back. Uh, but yeah, now you'll notice I can pitch the plane up and down, and it doesn't want to flip out on me. It's actually really stable now. It's doing exactly what I tell it to do. And we can sort of roll. We can go this way. It's actually really maneuverable. We can do little rolls like this. Whee! And maybe, if we're lucky, we can even do a loop-de-loop. -loop. Let's give it a try. Are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? All the way. All right. Let's see if we can make it on the way down. Are we going to hit the ground? Are we going to hit the ground? No, I think we got this. We got this. That was too easy. Let's make it harder. Let's go a little lower and try it again. Let's try from 200 meters, shall we? 300 meters, 240, 230. All right, let's try it from here. Oh, boy. Are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? 500... Oh yeah, this thing is really good with that. All right. Now, I'm not the only person that plays this game and makes videos. Uh, and it's actually sort of a common pattern. What people like to do when they make planes that work is to buzz the tower straight out of Top Gear. Top Gun, sorry. So let's, uh, let's bring it in for an approach and we'll buzz the tower. And there's also a bridge somewhere in here. I'll try and fly under the bridge. I'm not a great pilot, so I will probably crash, but that's okay. I'm not paying for the plane. All right, where's that bridge? Where's the bridge? Oh, boy. There it is. Okay. Let's try and come around to the bridge. Let's turn off the afterburner so we get a little slower. Oh, boy. All right, slow the plane down. Turn around, turn around, turn around. There we go. All right, we're aiming for the bridge, which is right about there. All right, let's see if we can do it. Come in nice and slow. I'm a pretty crappy pilot. Okay, here we go, here we go. Line up for it. We're going too fast, way too fast. I'm definitely going to crash. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm a little nervous, if I'm honest. A little nervous. Come on, turn that way. Turn, turn, turn. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Ah, nope, not going well. Great. That was expensive. Nice. Good amount of damage there. This is what happens when you miss your, uh, your tower flyby. All right, let's go back to the hangar. Now that we understand the basics of center of lift and center of mass, let's look at some bigger planes. Do I have a bigger plane here? Um, I don't have the plane that I flew in the last mission. Well, the mallard's kind of big. Let's take a look at that. Oh, yeah. This looks a little bit like the plane we built last time because it's using the same cockpit. doesn't have nearly as many engines. Um, but what you'll notice on this plane, which is a, another element of center of lift and center of mass, is again, the center of lift is just behind. Like, they're cutting it real close here. But what's interesting is you'll notice the engines are not vertically centered on the fuselage of the plane. And you might ask yourself, why is that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One it would lower the center of mass to have them lower. And then you'd see the vertical alignment to the center of mass would be lower. So let's actually do that, and you'll see what happens. Now the center of mass moves down. That actually, if we move the fuel that's attached to them as well, then the effect would be probably more pronounced. Let's try that. There we go. Now the center of mass is really sort of moving down. Now the center of lift and the center of mass are not only, they're aligned in one axis, but they're not aligned in another. So the plane is still going to want to torque. And then the last reason why they're up there is actually there is a third element called the center of thrust. And the idea is, so if I move the engines, the center of thrust moves quite a bit because it's aligned with the engines. 
And the rule of thumb for building airplanes is you want the center of thrust to point through the center of mass, right? And so if the center of thrust is below the center of mass, then the plane, again, is going to want to tilt. But if it's directly in line, then it's good. So let us... Um, all right, so I'm actually going to leave the game for a moment and open a web browser. And let's look at the space shuttle. Um, there's some good pictures. So, can we be a side profile of the space shuttle anywhere? This is pretty good. Let's look at this picture. Mm, now we can get something clearer. Let's get a really... Ah, here's a good, perfect picture. So what you'll see in this photo... Let's get a bigger version of it. Now let's just look at this for now. So you got the two massive solid rocket boosters on the side, right? So this orange thing is just a fuel tank. The two things on the side are solid rocket engines. And then you have the engines on the space shuttle, the orbiter itself. And you can imagine the space shuttle is like here, and the, the big rocket boosters are like right here, pushing up. Uh, and you imagine the center of mass of this whole spaceship is probably inset from the orbiter itself, from the space shuttle. It's probably somewhere inside the orange tank, right? It's probably in line closely with the solid rocket boosters. And you'll notice on this picture that the engines on the space shuttle are actually not pointed straight up. Actually, if we look at this picture as well, yeah, you sort of see they're at an angle. Um, I'm sure there will be another picture that shows it really clearly. No, not that one. Can't really see it there. Yeah, you, you sort of see here the nozzles are not pointed straight up. And the reason for that, I'm trying to get super clear. Yeah, it's just, I need a side picture. Why aren't there any good side pictures? How's this one? There we go, now you can see it really clearly. The engines on the space shuttle do not point along the axis of the space shuttle during launch. And the reason for that is the center of mass is somewhere over here. And so the engines are actually pointed through the center of mass. This prevents the space shuttle from on launch from tipping over backwards, uh, as it would otherwise do. And so that ends pretty much our lesson on center of gravity, center of mass. Let's, for the fun of it, let's fly this plane. Uh, I made some modifications, but I think it'll be fine. Let's see how we do. All right, big plane. Oof, my computer's having trouble. Ooh, she's not fast. We are at full throttle. Not so speedy. Although, this engine has a cargo bay door. Look at that. All right, let's bring that back up. Let's see, will it take off? Ooh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Pick up, pull up, pull up. There we go. Should we try and go under the bridge with this one? I'm not sure that's going to work, but we'll give it a shot. Ooh, we're just going to run right into the building, aren't we? Pull up, pull up, pull up. Uh, all right, there's the bridge. We'll have to come around. Right, one more time to go under the bridge. This plane's not as fast, so we'll have a little more time to line it up. All right. Coming about. Here we go. Nope, 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 nope. This way. Look at that graceful, it's like a whale. All right, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Okay, we can do this, we got this. We're perfectly lined up after that very graceful turn. Oh boy, I think we got it. I think we're gonna do it. We're gonna hit the buildings on the other side, aren't we? Oh yeah. And pull up, pull up. Yeah. Well, we made it under the bridge. That's a success. Look at that. Carnage and destruction. Blew up the whole space center. Excellent. All right. I think that's it for today. The game didn't crash. We learned a little bit about airplanes. Next time, when I'm back at my computer, we will go to the moon properly, and we will come home. We will go both ways.